don't know what that thing was, but all I know is I am getting out of here. Are you mad, man? There's no way to know where that is. Leaving now could seriously be the end of it. <laughs> Did you see its eye? I think you even saw some teeth. I'd rather just not talk about it. Yeah, well, someone's got to do something. We can't let that thing be on the loose. Let me go get my bat. I'm not going to let some monster scare me. Come on out. Where are you? Huh? Hiding in the bushes? In the brush? Maybe we're just imagining? Come on, get back in here! Before it's too late! Yeah, there's nothing out there anyway. Hey, what's that sound? <laughs> The G-strings out of tune again! <laughs> Welcome back, troglodytes, to your Halloween special for the year 2021. <laughs> this year, I have something truly, absolutely terrifying. You don't know what you've clicked upon. Well, you kind of do because you saw the thumbnail, but this year it's not necessarily a crazily modified guitar like we did the headless SG and the hornless SG. This year we have a Dr. Frankenstein created monster guitar. It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> <laughs> yes! It survived the trip okay. At least the parts that I love. Today, we are going to document this weird Stratocaster monster caster thing. I love it. <laughs> Here it is, this beautifully disgusting monster. So, let's take a second to fully appreciate what I've just purchased here to document this Halloween. So, this is a Stratocaster. We'll go a little bit more in detail on the workbench that has been transformed over by an artist. I believe he's in college, he just did this for fun, and then he listed it on Reverb just to be a funny guy because he wanted more people to see it. It initially had an asking price of 5,000 smackaroonies. Nah, I, I didn't pay anywhere near that much for it, but hey, I did buy this nice functional piece of art. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. The headstock actually says Fender, but I want to be very upfront and clear here. This started life as a Squire, so kind of a dicey guitar, but look at this. We've got all these veins. We have this monster kind of color to it. Don't forget about the giant eyeball up here. But my favorite thing about this thing, okay, my second favorite, is the fact that we got the teeth on the side. There's a mouth on this thing. <laughs> I love it. It's so freaky and bizarre. So basically what the artist did here is they had like a polymer clay and then they hand painted all this. I mean, this must have took forever to get all the veins and to get the Fender logo just right. Inlay the eye into the new clay. But the teeth was surely a stroke of genius. Now, for obvious reasons, he did not touch the fretboard and the neck because, I mean, this actually feels pretty good. Like, it's got a gloss finish to it, so, I mean, if you made it really smooth, you probably could play it like that, but let's just say it's probably better he left this stuff alone. But then we move on to the body. So this is like all hard. It's not squishy or anything. I don't think it's as fragile as he thought it would be. But we've got another eye down here inlaid in the guitar. It's looking slightly up. The seller had described this as a pearlescent paint. It's got a little bit of that going on to it. It's not too much. But I fell in love with this eye. It's so sleepy. It's like you just woken up this beast that has been in a slumber for millennia. And he's saying, why do you disturb my sleep? But perhaps the thing that made me absolutely fall in love with this, besides the teeth and this eye, the doofy output jack, there's a tongue on it. It's like, <laughs> why not? To take things a step even further, you know, like on, on your upper lip, there's that little ridge. 
he's crafted that ridge in there so this is just like a mouth <laughs> i love it i just wish there were like two little goofy eyes down here i mean you could technically say it's like a cyclops has just one eye as a screw or something like that but of course we also have our pickups that have been covered over now he swears it does not affect the tone at all I honestly don't care. This is more so a functional piece of art, in my opinion. Like, I was curious if the knobs were still going to move. Like, it does ride up against this screw just a tad, but they move pretty securely. All right, this one's a bit rough. But yes, you can move them without too much fear of things breaking. Oh, nice. To Mark 10, he's got one of those little veiny things here. I mean, it's just a, a, a weird, fleshy like rotten flesh guitar color, I guess you could say. I mean, the back, he went as far as doing the F logo back here. Again, it's a Squire, it's not an actual Fender. But it's front to back on this thing, all veined out. I mean, we'll take a more in-depth look on the workbench. I'm not I'm not sure if I can tear this stuff apart, but we'll, we'll, we sure will try. I mean, he even went as far as doing our Wang bar here, so now it's all gross. I feel like he could have put an eye on this or made this the tongue. <laughs> so it's a freaky monster caster. What is not to love about this thing? It's like when people take stuffed animals and like merge them together, just make them creepy. I mean, it, it's a very similar thing to that. It must have took this guy many of many of hours. And what if I told you this monster did not even start life like this? Let's take a look at some of the in-process photos together. So this started life as a Squire 50s vibe Stratocaster. Not a terribly expensive guitar, but a very respectable one. They cost $449 brand new. However, he upgraded the tuning machines, he swapped out the pickups to some fenders, added a high mass bridge to it. So it's not just a basic Squire, it's been upgraded a little bit outside of the sculpting. And it almost sounds to me that he changed out the body. I'm not 100% sure. He didn't really tell me too much. But at one point in time, he thought he was going to make it look like this. So he just had the two eyes on it, kind of making it look like a crazy face. But unfortunately, once you put the trem back in the system, uh, you wouldn't have that. But he could have easily sculpted that into like a skeleton monster or something. But the first round of this guitar, it was actually more of like a blackish gray color and he had these giant teeth on it so that's why it's got so much extra space here and he kind of filled it in with the red to make it look like a mouth i've got to say i totally love the giant teeth but what he ended up doing on this at the end of the day definitely looked better in my opinion and here's a look at the output jack boat before he did all the extra painting to it and here's what that pick guard originally looked like. It was just kind of like a blackish brown type thing. And it was going to look like this. Gotta say, not all that impressed. But apparently this got shared on Instagram somewhere. And he got some feedback. And then it turned into this. So a little bit of story behind this. I actually first found this because a viewer of the show sent it to me. They're like, dude, you should document this guitar. Do a wiring on it. But I, I believe my exact words were, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> like, I actually secretly like it, hate. So I saved it in my watch list and I thought this would be a perfect Halloween episode because, you know, it's not necessarily something I would normally buy, but it's kind of cool in a creepy sort of way. So perfect for Halloween. And I tried to buy this thing from him for a couple of months, but we could just never really agree on price. But hey, it was Halloween time, so I was feeling a little bit more generous. So I paid him the price that he was wanting, and I was just hoping that this darn tongue would stay intact. But what really pushed me over the edge besides Halloween coming up is the fact that Reverb shared this on their Instagram page. And I was like, no, no, somebody else is going to buy it. Come on. I was hoping that the seller and I could you know, come a little bit closer into terms for price. And that was back when I still thought it was a Fender. <laughs> oh, well. But thankfully, nobody bought it. And I think it all comes down to Reverb didn't show the coolest photo, <laughs> the teeth. All right, troglodytes, let's go ahead and throw the monster on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs to fully appreciate the beauty of this monstrosity. Inside the monster caster, let's have some fun here. Starting with taking a look at the upper bout here with this giant eyeball in the veins. You can tell the sculptor was definitely an artist because if you would have just had the eyeball looking straight on, it wouldn't capture the same vibe of this thing looking up here in fear of like this eyeball, or maybe it's scared that the strap is gonna fall off. You better watch out. 
But let's just take a second to truly appreciate all the time and material that went into creating this. I mean, everything on this thing was hand done, carved out of this like epoxy clay material. This is a completely textured and hand painted guitar. But thankfully it feels completely secure, like it's not going to just splinter off on you. And then here's our little sleepy guy here. Don't worry little guy, we won't keep you up too much longer. This color really reminds me of like a radioactive, decaying brain, vomit, zombie type thing. I don't know, it's really hard to describe what this is. But this doofy little tongue has to be my absolute favorite part of this entire piece. I think he probably could have got away with leaving that of a more fleshy color and just like put a little bit of green in it to show that it's decaying, but he just decided to match for the rest of the guitar. But now we've got our pickup routes here. It looks like you could just maybe fit a mini humbucker in there, but these other two, that's just straight up for humbuckers. If somebody wanted to modify this guitar, all they'd really have to do is custom commission this artist to make new pickup covers for whatever they want in here. But besides that, within this cavity, we have a couple of grounding tabs, and unfortunately, I'm not sure if I did this when I took it apart or if it was just never attached. The grounding wire that goes to the bridge is not attached, and silly me, I don't have my soldering iron with me today to fix it. Hopefully that won't cause us too much troubles. But while doing all the artwork, he upgraded lots of parts on this guitar, so like our pickups are now from a 70s Fender Ventera series Stratocaster. So they're not going to be anything too crazy, but they should be pretty decent. As far as the rest of the electronics, it looks like 250k alpha branded pots, nothing too fancy. You can see some of the additional paintwork back here too. So far, the only thing I think I would change on this is the inside should have been totally painted like a blood red color, like you're inside the monster, right? But it's kind of meant to be a display and playing piece and there's not too many madmen that actually tear their guitars apart for fun. It'd just be a fun easter egg for anybody who's working on the guitar, but hey, say you didn't want this pick guard on here anymore. Thankfully, this wasn't glued down or anything. It came up pretty easily and it didn't give me any troubles. But we can just take a look at the texturing that he put on here, all the knobs and the pickup covers. I mean, definitely a lot of work went into creating this piece. I was hoping the finish was going to be a little bit more metallic because it said in the description that it had a polychromatic sheen but maybe I was just misunderstanding exactly what that means. I mean, if this would have been too sparkly, it probably wouldn't have looked good, so I think it's all right as is. But you will never miss this toggle switch. The tip is just so big and bulky, it works. And I never realized it's the, the 10 position on the knobs that gets the veins. Now, they're a little bit hard to turn because they do kind of catch, but it's not that big of a deal. The bridge system was swapped out for one of the Fender High Mass bridges, and you know, it works pretty well. He decided not to mess with that part because there's so many moving parts, so much that could potentially go wrong. So, you know, you could use it as is, just like this. At least he did the bar. It is a bit stiff to use this trem though. Now here's a fun spec. The body is made out of pine because all this clay is pretty heavy, so he didn't want it to be too heavy of a guitar. But we do have a beautiful maple neck. With 21 frets on this with a gloss top and the black dot inlays. And hey, check out the wood grain on this thing. It's actually pretty darn nice. You even get some flame figuring here within like that first to second and third fret. I mean, it's nothing to get crazy about, but it's definitely there. I could have not have asked for a nicer neck on this zombie caster. Even if it does have a bit of a smoky odor to it. We've got a 9.5 inch radius though, so somewhere in between vintage and modern, and the regular 25.5 inch scale length. 1.67 inches at the nut, 2.02 by the 12th, first fret neck depth 0.85, and 0.87 by the 12th. So kind of like a, a modern C-shaped neck profile would be my best estimate here. It's pretty comfortable to play. So now the headstock. I was kind of scared that he filled the truss rod in, and that's kind of what prevented me from buying this for so long. But it does look like you can still adjust that. I don't think he messed with that. That's what's great about this is he was a guitarist enough to know not to mess with the parts that would have messed with the guitar's art. So he upgraded the tuners to the Godos as we were talking about before. Kind of went crazy with the veins on the headstock, etched the Fender logo in, but underneath here is a Squire logo. Before we swap over to the backside, let's go ahead and get our pickup readings. So 5.74k ohms in the neck, 6.13k ohms in the bridge, 6.06 in the middle, 
Now the in-betweens for fun, neck middle 2.98 and bridge middle 3.08. So pretty basic standard stuff here. Nothing too crazy. We don't have any push pulls for series parallel or coil split or tap or anything like that. So let's go ahead and swap over to the back side here. So here's what that back control plate cover looks like. Pretty much the same thing as we saw on the rest of the guitar. He only coated the back side of it. The inside's still white. Here's what the trem system looks like. Three springs and a non-magnetic block. And now uh, we can just appreciate the back side of this. Some very large veins back here. I feel like he kind of rushed the back a little bit more though than he did the front simply because not as many people are going to see it. But there's still some very intricate design work back here. But he still did a lot of attention to detail stuff. So like look at our neck plate. He put the Fender logo on that too. One thing I didn't really notice until I really started to look into this is like... Look at the bottom of the strap button right here. So all the veins stem from outside of it. It's almost like a root system. Unfortunately, nothing like that at the top strap button. The sides are pretty much more or less the same as the rest. Not a whole bunch of veins going on, but you still get the textured and the clay. He could have cheaped out and just did the top or just the back, but everything cut away and all. <laughs> this is an interesting guitar. Whether you like the color scheme or not, now, messing around with this thing, it looks like uh, some of these sparkles from touching the inside of like the back control plates still had it, so my fingers kind of got sparkly. But moving up the back side of the neck, it is a full-on gloss finish, beautifully tinted, all the wood grain, and a super dark skunk stripe on this. Really happy with this neck for being a squire. Then, of course, the back, you get some veins and even more epoxy coating. And yes, the beautiful teeth on the side. That is just the icing to the cake. Now I was really excited to throw this thing under blacklight, but fortunately it doesn't do too much. The red paint comes out a little bit more and like the eyes have a really mysterious glow to it. Oh man, I don't know. Now that I'm looking at it close up, it's kind of cool. This is a nice blacklight guitar. You can see some of the uh, pearlescence kind of come to life on this. It looks more alien at this point rather than zombified. All right, now let's check out our headstock. Regular glowing for our fretboard and neck. But there we go, that red really starts to come out for the Fender logo, and once again, our eye. But wait till you see the teeth. Oh man, they're so blinding. It's blinding my camera. <laughs> I don't know what he made those things out of, but man, that really black lights well. And the rest, I mean, it's not too much to talk about. And this thing, kind of chunky for a Stratocaster, 8 pounds, about 8.5 ounces. But let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this thing sounds. Oh yeah, this thing plays and sounds actually surprisingly better than I could have even imagined. So let's go ahead and run through these things, starting with our disgusting neck position. I'd say that sounds pretty good. Let's try our middle position now. Try the combination of the neck and middle. The definition of glassy with our glassy eye here. <laughs> Now we'll swap over to that bridge position. Not gonna lie, that actually sounds a little bit weak. Maybe this shot will give us some extra bite in the bridge. But 
but now we'll try it in the combination of those two. <laughs> like that. Now I'll just compare them all. I'm happy with it. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Might not be everybody's color choice here. And I am finding uh, my favorite eye is kind of right where I like to have my arm. Like it's just slightly above it. So it's not exactly in my way, but depending on your playing style, it might be in your way. It's just slightly up there, but I can definitely feel it and I'm scared I'm gonna break it. Same thing with uh, the way I pick. Normally I pick right over that middle pick up there. And I mean, if you're using a really thick or a metal pick or something, you might be able to chip this off. I'm not sure, like, it sounds like a rock because it has such a hard coating on it. It doesn't feel extra fragile. Now, I'm sure if you ding this pretty hard, that tongue would just come straight off. But as far as everything else, it actually feels, you know, pretty secure. It would withstand the elements is what I'm trying to say. But let's go ahead and uh, try some distorted tones. <laughs> just comes to life. Nice. Let's try that neck position now. <laughs> Thank you. 
now that we know all about the zombie caster or the monster caster, whatever you want to call this thing, what are my final thoughts on this thing? I don't regret buying it at all. Like, I just thought this was going to be a novelty. Okay, yeah, kind of a cool Halloween episode, but my goodness. Like, it sounds way better than I was expecting. Like, I thought it was just going to be really cheap single coils, but they actually are pretty darn aggressive sounding, especially that neck pickup. I mean, sure, on the clean tones, we discovered that the bridge didn't quite have as much to it. But based on this guitar, if that's actually the 70s Ventera pickups in here, I would heavily suggest one of those guitars. But yeah, this thing's a lot of fun. It might not be for everyone. It might just be a guitar for your Halloween gig or trick-or-treat night. If you're just dressing up as a zombie, why not be a guitar playing zombie? I can appreciate this thing for what it is, as creepy and strange and kind of ugly <laughs> for what it is. I mean, maybe I would have chose a different color. Like, I, I get what they're going for with this. And it was just kind of an experimental piece, something for fun. It's not something this guy does for a living, as far as I understand. But man, yeah, it's... It's bizarre, but I do not regret documenting this guitar because it's just great. I really like the feel of this neck. I've always liked the lacquered maple though. Some guys don't like that. They prefer the satin on the back. And since this guitar was so surprisingly good, I decided I'm going to give it a Fender case. You know what's great about this? The fact that it's a slightly bigger Stratocaster body because you have this what whatever it is on the outside of it. Normally, these Fender cases, they have a small gap and the guitars will move. This thing is such a nice snug fit. It just works perfectly. And hey, I was able to get that bar off. You just have to really be careful not to mess with your ridges right here. Kind of pull it up as you're turning it. But your tongue is still attached. This would look better with like a red interior though. But hey, happy Halloween. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hey, check out all the other cool Halloween videos that I've done in the past to celebrate this spooky month. All right, take care. Thank you.